Hello boys and girls, I'm Pearl of Wisdom and you're listening to my NHL Pros of Wisdom. And we're going to be doing trade talks again. Yes, sir. Back to the trade talk we just did. Chikrin we did. Uh, Tarasenko just before he got traded. And what other ones did we do? We did all the ones in the land. Kane, Tay, uh, Taves. We did all the ones. But we have a new one today. Look at, look at. Look at here, Bertuzzi, check this out. As we inch closer to the March 3rd trade deadline, uh, there's, of course, trade offers are going to be picking up. I'm going to be doing tons of these videos. And uh, Detroit Wings, Red Wings forward Tyler Bertuzzi is a pending unrestricted free agent. Sportsnet Jeff McCarrick, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Jeff Merrick, Noted the brief extension talks between the Red Wings and Bertuzzi didn't go anywhere. He also reports that he's expected, the Red Wings are expected a high price for Bertuzzi. But the main thing is, is they didn't go anywhere. And they also told Merrick that they're expecting to, they want a high price for Bertuzzi. Which means they're willing to trade Bertuzzi, I would say. You know, it doesn't mean necessarily it's going to happen. But I'd say that's giving you a pretty good indication that we could at least do a trade video about it. I would say for sure. And we're going to. And we're going to talk about Mr. Bertuzzi, where he may go. Uh, seven teams, in fact. We're going to look at Bertuzzi himself. We're going to look at what the Detroit Red Wings may want in return for Bertuzzi, and seven teams they may go. And we're going to do that right away. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all the sports in the land, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Also, I'm a professional handicapper, uh, up 135 units this year. If you don't know what units are, you shouldn't be betting. But I can tell you how to do it. It's a lot of money. Let's put it that way. Up a lot of money this year. BPOW picks. Check it out. You can do a one day thing like for 15 bucks of all the frolic in the land. Okay. I'm gone. Let's go look at all the stuff that we can look at with Mr. Tyler Bertuzzi. This work. Yes, it did. I did this once before, and I didn't have my capture on. It was a lot of fun. He's from Sudbury, Ontario, don't you know? He's 27 years old, left, shooting six what six foot one, 185. He can play both sides though, right and left wing. See, right and left wing. It's not just me saying it. It's right there. Uh, 27 years old, still a relatively young guy. It's his first year of free agency. Uh, his base salary now is $5 million a year. Contracts went nowhere with Detroit. Now, I'll talk a little bit about that while we're in here. Um, I never really got an indication that, that Stevie Y was all that big of a fan of Tyler Bertuzzi. Um, it seemed to kind of stem from when he wouldn't take the shot for COVID. Uh, it, it did not sit well with Stevie Y. Um, I don't think that's everything to do with it, and I may be just speculating there, but I honestly don't know what you would not want to see, want in a guy who's had, uh, who had 62 points in 68 games after that COVID. 30 goals, 32 points, 62 games. And he plays rough and tumble hockey, my friends. This guy does not screw around in the corners and wherever. And he's always pissing people off. And he's high energy. Um, kind of odd. Sort of power forward type guy that can put up big points in the NHL. The other thing could be just simply because his asking price for what he wants is just way too high for what he thinks he is. I don't know what that asking price is. Uh, close to a point a game winger, he could be looking for you know $8 million a year, long term. 
Uh, he's 27 years old now. So it could be just simply he doesn't want to pay somebody till they're 35 years old. And there was another thing. Sorry, I had to, I'll go back to Tyler Bertuzzi there for a second. Um, he's injured quite a bit. He was injured this year quite a bit. He's only had eight points in 21 games this year. Uh, so he wasn't, yeah, he, he had, I think he missed like 12 or 14 games last year, which isn't that terrible, I suppose. But the whole, almost a whole one year after when they got started after COVID, he couldn't play in Canada because he wouldn't get the shot. And I don't know, it just seemed to me it didn't sit well with the way Stevie Eisman talked about it. Every time they brought it up to Stevie Y, he just, it, he had an annoying, annoyed look on his face. And I just don't think it sat well with him. And he doesn't think he's a team player for whatever reason. But I know a lot of people are going to want him. So what are they going to want in return? Um, Detroit's in a situation right now where they're, borderline playoff team, maybe not this year, but they're heading that direction. They have a ton of great talent. You know, uh, Jacob Brana is, they're bringing Jacob Brana back up again, I guess, you know, after his little stint to help himself out. Um, Lucas Raymond, uh, they just got Ville Husso, who's been playing fairly well for them. He's had a little bit of a struggle this year, but it's it's a defense that's a little bit difficult to play with. They're growing, a growing defense. They went out and got Ben Chirot for $4.7 million, which I think is an overpayment big time, but the perception is that he's a shutdown, top-pairing defenseman. I don't agree, but that doesn't matter. The perception is that. So he went out and got Ben Chirot, and he went out and got guys like David Perron, spent money, Andrew Kopp, these older players, do you think, I don't think Stevie White did that thinking, okay, we're, we're building now, and now Tyler Bertuzzi is up for a contract and apparently available. So I say all this saying, thinking that he would prefer players in return, I believe, and he's going to be asking for a lot. He may not be able to get that as we look at every single at every team, but I, I really don't think he's looking for picks as much. That's not his main focus here. He probably would be looking for somebody to replace Tyler Bertuzzi if he can, maybe some more veteran de defense help, although they've got a lot of really good young defensemen coming up, uh, especially like Simone Edvidson. And as far as forwards, they have Soderblom there. They're, they're building a pretty nice depth there. So. Trading Bertuzzi to me is a signal that we this player just isn't fitting with us. But he wants a high amount, and he should because he's put up good numbers in his career. He had an injured year. So we're going to look at seven teams that Bertuzzi may go to. And when I did these videos before, every time I did like an O'Reilly, that's right, I did an O'Reilly video. Every time I did an O'Reilly video or something like that, everybody's like, we want Bertuzzi, 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 Bertuzzi. It was funny. One of the reasons why they said they didn't want O'Reilly, though, was he was injured all the time. And Bertuzzi has had injury problems, but he is younger. So first one we're going to is mostly to do with the fact that Bertuzzi is from Toronto. One more thing I got to say here. Anybody trading them, it's either a rental or they can re-sign them, right? So we got to take that into consideration. Anybody that can re-sign them is probably going to be more interested and maybe even give up a little more to get them so they can get them now before he becomes an unrestricted free agent. Which brings us to, I'm going to go from like the least to the most sort of kind of thing, likely to be able to pick them up. Toronto Maple Leafs. And the reason why I went with the Toronto Maple Leafs is, first of all, they could use a left winger big time. Jan Kroc, I don't think, is a guy that they want to be going in as their top left winger into the playoffs with if they don't have to. He's, he's ser served it fairly well. You know, he's under 20 goals. He's right around a 40-point guy. But that's not really the point production you want at a top six player that's playing with Tavares and Nylander. Uh, he's, he's pretty good two ways. He's not bad. But for the most part, 
he should be playing in your bottom six, not in your top six. And they could use more depth in their roster altogether. So he can put up some point production out of the bottom six, which can't be said for some of the players that they have down there, such as Zach Aston Reese, uh, Pierre Engvall. He does okay, but I really think Yarn Cluck would be better in that position. And Engvall can always switch over to the right side because he does pretty well on the right side. Anyway, that all being said, someone has got to go back here, right? Uh, he's making $5 million. Detroit could retain, and the other difficult part of this, of course, is that it's in the same division. And, you know, a lot of teams are just not excited about making a team that they're going to be in the same division playing on a regular basis better. Also, but I'll say this. If, in fact, Bertuzzi is looking like he's going to sign in Toronto anyways, what does it matter? It's not like Detroit's going to be making the playoffs this year. And if he's going to sign there anyways, you might as well get some players and stuff back for from him, from him, from them now rather than get nothing back and he goes there anyways, right? So who would go back in return? Well, first of all, we got to look at the cap space here for Toronto, which I'm sure is it's never very good. And 1.1 million. So if Detroit retained and I don't see why they wouldn't, to tell you the honest truth. He's at, what, four point, he's at uh, what, five million now, just over five million. Uh, they would have to make up another million and a half on this deal to go back. And they're saying that they're asking a lot, and I really don't think they're going for picks. So... Does Toronto have what it takes? I know everybody's going to say Kerfoot, but what the heck does Detroit want Kerfoot for? Kerfoot's going to be a free agent at the end of this year as well. He's not what you would call a number two center. So I don't think that Kerfoot – the only reason why Kerfoot would be going back is to make the money work, and then the trade would start from there. Detroit's getting no value by getting Alexander Kerfoot. Kerfoot. So the trade would start from there. So why would you give up Kerfoot now when you he's still a serviceable player and you're going into the playoffs anyways? The thing about here is I don't think Toronto really wants to give players back in this deal, but somehow they have to make the money work and somebody's got to go back. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I'm Detroit, if I'm going to do this, I want Joseph Wall first. I, I keep on getting goaltenders there. They've got... Uh, Kosa that they picked up a year ago, who's kind of struggling right now. Um, and, you know, Huso's doing very well, but finding that number one goaltender to me is of huge value. Now, he doesn't really make much money, so that's not going to change the fact that they still need a player. And, the only, you know, Nicholas Robertson could be part of the deal. Could be. But we need a player. The only thing I would do here if I was Detroit, the only thing I would do, honestly, after looking at this over and over and over again, is Rasmus Sandin. And the only way, and, and I just don't think Toronto's going to do it. I don't think Toronto would do that. It would make the money work. But I don't think they want to take off their defense to add to their offense. They'll try to find a top six some other way. And I know Toronto fans want this guy over and over again. That's why I put Toronto first. Maybe, 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 maybe Pierre Engvall. But now you're giving your first round draft pick in 23 because they don't need Pierre Engvall either. But he does have some value. It would make the money work. And now you're looking at giving up picks. 2023 first. Engvall and maybe and Robertson, maybe something like that. That's what you'd be looking at. Hopefully, you better be able to re-sign him, I think, if you're going to do a deal like that. That might do it. Might. The 2023 is a late first, and it depends on how much they like Robertson. Toronto fans, would you do all that? 
would you would they be able to sign Bertuzzi? Kerfoot comes off the books. You don't need to sign him. You already got rid of Engvall, right? What do they got for cap space? Ten million, and he's asking for eight. That would probably be a rental. Sorry, Toronto fans. I can't see this happening. You guys wrote me, message me, everything, comment. I get stuff in my inboxes all the time from Toronto fans. Can we get Bertuzzi and all of that? The answer is I don't think so. Tell me what you guys think out there in the land. If you can, if you somehow can see it work. I understand why you want him. He's kind of that type of player that Toronto doesn't seem to have, right? Super piss, piss you off, competitive, physical, can play both ways, offensive. I get it. He's from Toronto. I totally get it. I just don't see them having, short of giving up your 2023-2024 first Robertson, like really going over the top to get him, and then you, and then you're not able to sign him anyways. Doesn't make sense to me. All right. Sorry, Leafs fans. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. Pearl of Wisdom. My NHL Pearls of Wisdom. NHL Pearl of Wisdom. If you're on Facebook right now, because I send these out to Facebook land. Yeah, can't subscribe there. You got to go search Pearl of Wisdom. NHL's Pearl or something of that on YouTube. Got to do a little work. All right, next. Same issue. Same demand. Boston Bruins. It's within the division, but I know for sure if I were to post this up in when I post up this up in Boston land, people are going to be all over it, even though they don't even really need a top six. You know, they, they don't even really need a top six. Taylor Hall could slip down and play with Coyle and Smith, though, and then you got offense in your bottom six. Uh, Again, the problem here is I don't think they're going to be looking for prospects as much. They'll take them, but they want players. Detroit is not in a position where they're rebuilding anymore. They're trying to move forward. They're trying to get into a playoff spot. So, And this is in Boston. Again, like I said in the Toronto deal, though, if Bertuzzi is thinking about signing in Boston already, and they know it, and he wants to go there, why wouldn't you trade it, Detroit? You might as well get a couple, you might as well get a couple picks or a player or whatever back from Boston rather than not get anything back from them when he goes there anyways, right? And, you know, you kind of make Bertuzzi happy, which is always good if you're talking to free agents and stuff like that, trying to draw people in there. They players listen and watch on how you treat your players. So, and, and a lot of people will say, well, how come they traded that guy? They didn't get much in return. A lot of the time is because they're taking care of the player because they don't want to get around the league that they don't treat their players well. Anyways, I think Brandon Carlo would have to be part of this deal. If you do that, it's almost, you don't even hardly have to retain any money. Going by the fact that Stevie Y went out and got Ben Sherratt, I think they might be interested in a Brandon Carlo. Similar type of player. He seems to like big, solid defensemen. Um, the thing is, is who else is going to replace him on defense? I'm not sure. I, I, I love it when I go to Boston and they say, we'll give him Mike Riley. Mike Riley isn't even playing on your team. He's playing in the minors. You think he's a piece that's actually going to bring something like Bertuzzi back? No, <clears throat> he's not. He was put on waivers. Anybody could have had him for $3 million a year. Now, I like Mike Riley better than most. And when he, uh, in the offseason, I, I would hope my team would take a good look at him. But... You're not getting back anything for for Mike Riley. Now, you could bring him up after you trade Carlo and use him in the top six now. I think he's better. Like Analytics-wise, flat out, Mike Riley's better than Carlo. So I wouldn't mind doing that. 
Um, I know one thing, Boston fans, they love their big, solid, move it out of the crease type guys and stuff like that. And I do too, but I like them to be able to play. And personally, I, I, I don't think Brandon, I think Brandon Carlo is pretty overrated. However, I thought Sherratt was overrated, and Mr. Eisenman gave him $4.7 million a year. So, Brandon Carlo and the 2023 first round pick. I think that's what it would take, something like that. They don't care about Craig Smith. We'll give him Craig Smith. Why would he want Craig Smith? He's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. They're not making the playoffs. Craig Smith is going nowhere. You might be able to pawn him off on some other team to make room for another player or another defenseman you like better than Carlo, but nobody wants Craig Smith. I think it's going to be Carlo in a first. They said they wanted a lot, though. I hope that's enough. That's all I would want to give up if I was going to do it, especially if you can't sign. So you got to look at that. Can they sign him up after this? Well, yeah, maybe. You got Smith going to be gone. You're not going to sign the Smith back. You don't need to sign Nosek back. Uh, Pasternak's going to need a deal, though, right? Everybody knows that. Twenty-one million in cap space, and he's asking for eight. I don't know. I don't know. That's uh, Pasternak's going to get ten, I imagine. Eight for Bertuzzi. You can fit him in, but how do you sign the rest of your lineup? So it might be a rental. I wouldn't do it for any more than Carlo in a first. But mm, Bertuzzi in that lineup? <sighs> All right. Tell me what you think, Boston fans. Would you give up Bertuzzi in a first for him? Um I know I hear a lot of people say, I wouldn't do it for a second. Well, don't even comment then, because you're not getting Bertuzzi. You're not getting a, a point-of-game left winger that competes like a son of a bitch and pisses everybody off everywhere he goes. Plays exactly the way you want your players to play. If you think you're getting him for a second in Riley, don't even bother comment on it, because you're not. You're just not. But you can comment on, uh, you can comment if you like, you have a deal that makes sense that actually has value. Here's a good thing. When you're looking at picking up a player like Bertuzzi or something like that at the trade deadline, you have to say, what do I not want to give up? And then choose some of those things. You don't go, oh, uh, what do I, what would, what, what do I not care if I give, give up? Because if you don't care about giving it up, the other general manager doesn't care about giving it up. <laughs> you can be pretty much rest assured of that. Uh, uh, subscribe to my channel. Go to Perlo's NHL on YouTube if you're on Facebook. Otherwise, just subscribe right now. And uh, if you're on YouTube right now. And subscribe to my channel and comment in my comment section and let me know what you think about that. I'll talk to you. I will. All right. Winnipeg Jets. And the reason why I have the Winnipeg Jets here mostly is because Bertuzzi is from... Ontario and Winnipeg has a very difficult time getting players to play in Winnipeg it's a small market it's cold as ass freaking freezing in the winter time it's not really like the sexiest place in the world to live okay you got millions of dollars if, if you let's put it this way Anybody there that's not from Winnipeg, say you're from the United States, whatever the case may be, maybe even if you are in Winnipeg, I'm in Edmonton right now, okay? If I won the lottery, you think I'm staying in Edmonton? Nay, nay. I'm not moving to Winnipeg either. <laughs> so a lot of them, I don't blame these guys that don't want to go there, but for a lot of reasons, players do want to go there. And one of them is if you're a big family guy. Another good thing about Winnipeg is you quite often, once you get there, they don't let you go. They, they, you can stay there for a long time. You can put your family there. And I'm not sh um, I'm from Edmonton. I'll tell you, there are some great things if you're not a millionaire. And even if you are, we're, we have no crime. Uh, the family environments in Winnipeg and, and Edmonton are great. And the fans in Winnipeg are amazing. If you listen to Winnipeg games, man, they are awesome, awesome, awesome fans. So 
Also, one of the big draws is if you're from Ontario, Winnipeg is just like so close. And for that reason, Winnipeg pretty much goes tries to go after anybody who's from Ontario. And they could really use him more down the road than now because Blake Wheeler's 36 years old. He's getting up there. He's making $8 million. He's going to need a new contract in the next little while if they do happen to keep him. He's having a fantastic year, though, so who knows how, how long he can hold on like that. Um, but he would be a good replacement there for at 27 years old for Blake Wheeler as he retires and moves on. Um, he can also play both sides, so if there's injuries, he can play both sides. Um, that, those are the main reasons that I think they would be interested. They're in the West, so it makes it a little easier for Detroit to swallow, sending them off that way. So the next question, of course, we have to ask is what do they have for cap space? Seven million. They have seven million now for cap space. They could fit his contract right in now. So Detroit wouldn't have to retain in this deal, although you could get him to retain, so you could add even more to your lineup. The question now, a question, and next year you have 16 million in cap space, and we don't know about Pierre Luc Dubois, but he could be signed, and Bertuzzi could probably be signed. And man, you got some pretty darn good depth in Winnipeg with that deal. But you do got to trade somebody back. They want, they do want players there. They want a return. So that's what makes it a little difficult. I think Mason Appleton, which sucks because he he went to Seattle, then they brought him back, and he really likes Winnipeg. They, you know, it is hard to find guys that want to play at Winnipeg. But if you talk to Bertuzzi, you work out a deal with him beforehand, you're getting a much better player. You could put give Mason Appleton. Honestly, Detroit could use a guy like Mason Appleton over there, but it's going to take more than that for sure. Um, it's going to take probably the first round draft pick in twenty three. Mason Appleton. Try try to throw them Logan Stanley and see if they'll bite. They seem to like big lugs there on defense. He was a first round pick at one time, and. Uh, Maybe somebody like, you know, Brad Lambert. I mean, he. How was he doing with the Flyers this year? Oh, he's in the Western Hockey League. He's crushing not bad in the Western League. He, he, so I don't know. That might be a guy you don't want to give up. He, I mean, there, you're going to have to give up a player you don't want to give up, anyways. But maybe a good prospect, a decent prospect on that, as well. Like Sh Shibrokov. Somebody like that. I believe he was drafted second overall in 2021. So basically it would be like a second, a first, Appleton, and Logan Stanley. Something like that. I don't I don't know. I personally wouldn't take Logan Stanley myself. I'm not a Logan Stanley fan. But I'm just going by the fact that they did give Sherrod a crap load of money. And I'm not a Sherrod fan. So if they like that type of player... That type of player being ones that really don't play defense well but beat people up a lot, maybe he'll do it. Maybe they'll do it. Tell me what you think about that, Winnipeg fans. Subscribe to my channel and let me know. And if you're on Facebook, search Perlo's NHL on YouTube and subscribe there. Or comment in the comment section and let me know. Next, New York Islanders. And this would be... Uh, and I, I, I did this after the trade of Bo Horvat. So um, quite simply, if I'm the New York Islanders, I'm trying to do this all day long. Uh, I don't think the Bo Horvat deal puts him, on, puts him over the top as far as a player is concerned, as far as whether they are a cup contender or not. Um, honestly, I don't do any of this if I'm the New York Islanders, but since it seems that the ownership group or whatever is not willing to rebuild at all, they're, they, they believe that they're just going to keep on trying to be winning the cup and contenders and whatever with a roster that probably isn't ever going to do that. You might as well make it more like a roster that is going to eventually do that. Um, with this deal, 
they're going to have to give up some serious players to make this work right now. I mean, I can't how much caps I can't see them having any cap space after that Horvat deal, right? 1.9 um the Troy could ret retain and that would be a rental. Now Lamorello is not one to do rentals. They've only got 6 million in cap space next year. Which with who to sign? Scott Mayfield. You know, Parise doesn't have you forget about Parise. Let Mayfield go. And you still gotta make room for it. But possibly you could do something in this deal where you give him back Palmieri. Is Palmieri, please tell me, he's got a full no trade clause, doesn't he? Uh, a moderate no trade clause next year. This year he's got a full no trade. Maybe you can beg him. Beg him to go to Detroit. I don't know. Uh, I don't think Detroit would want him, so it's really just making the money work, and then the deal starts. That's the thing about this deal. You get If, if you can beg and plead, for Palmieri to go with $5 million for the next three years, you would bring some better uh, some better in the leadership to that Detroit team that probably does need it. But you can start the deal from that and just give up whatever the hell. Like, whatever. What do you got? 2024 for sure. Here you go. Uh, basically, whatever you got in the cupboard. Uh, Oliver Wallstrom. He's injured anyways. I... How long? He's 22. Jeez. For Bertuzzi now, do you think Wallstrom is ever going to be as good as Bertuzzi is now? I think that would do it. Palmieri and Oliver Wallstrom. Palmieri makes the money work. Wallstrom is a 22-year-old that can almost play now for Detroit. Who's got a ton of upside. They get a player to replace Bertuzzi on the right side. Uh, maybe a pick. And you just might be able to sign Bertuzzi down the road. You might. If you could make it work, though, man, this team could. I mean, Bertuzzi is everything that Lamorello and the Islanders love, right? Where the heck am I going here? That's Palmier. I don't want that. There we go. He's everything that the Islanders love. And you would now... What the... I only do one take on all this stuff, by the way, you guys. Look at the depth chart. He's actually even fast. So he would take Palmieri's spot with Nelson and Lee. We got a second line now. Whee! Yeah, I don't know if Matthew Barzell is going to stay there playing on the right side forever with Horvat. I don't think so. I think I would actually put Nelson on the left side and bring uh, Horvat down with uh, Nelson, Horvat, and uh, Bertuzzi. Something like that. But honestly, Matt, I, I really don't... Even with Bertuzzi, is this team a contender? I don't know. But I know they'd be in on him, no doubt about that. They'd be trying to make it work. They're trying to scratch something together to get rid of somebody or whatever. Maybe they finally realize that you can't have Varlamov forever at $5 million. That's right. Don't sign Varlamov. That, there you go. Don't sign Semyon Varlamov and get a cheaper backup finally. And you can sign Bertuzzi next year. Bertuzzi, Horvat, Barzal, if you want to keep on doing it that way. Uh, you know, Bailey can play down here where he's supposed to. And Lee, Nelson, and whoever you want to put on the right side. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know if it'll work. Man, I don't know if it makes you enough better, but I know you got. I know they'd love to have them. That's for sure.
the more I look at this deal, I don't know. He's 27 years old. Horvat, Bertuzzi, Horvat, Barzal, and then you still got to find a right winger to play with Nelson and Luke. Maybe that, maybe Simone Holmst Simon Holmstrom will be ready. You know, there's a lot of begging, wishing in that. There's a lot of wishing that Islander fans are going to have to do for the next few years because they have no prospects. They didn't build any depth in their organization. They're just throwing darts at a board as far as I'm concerned. Comment in the comment section, Islanders fans. Let me know what you think about that. All right, New Jersey Devils. If they don't get Meyer, and I don't really know why they're going after Meyer, besides the fact that he would be really good now, it would seem to me if they got Meyer or Bertuzzi that they wouldn't have Brad anymore, right? Comment in the comment section, New Jersey fans, and let me know how that's going to work for them. Because, okay, next year you got to sign Brad. And, I mean, assuming you sign him, and apparently he's looking for $9 million a year. What's the cap space? Okay, you got $36 million in cap space. You got Miles Wood. He's gonna need a. He's gonna need more than that. He's gonna probably be four and a half. So twenty some. Eric Hall about the same. Sharon Govich probably gets a bit of a raise. Damon uh, Damon Severson can. You don't need to resign. I would. I would probably resign Graves, uh, but he's gonna want about five million. Maybe you do got it. Maybe you can do it. And maybe you can do Meyer as well. You can fit him in, even if you sign Brat. Man, that's a great lineup. If I, I got New Jersey here because if they're out on Meyer, I think they would be in on Bertuzzi. And they've got lots of things that they can give to get Bertuzzi. I also think, in a way, Bertuzzi might be a type of player that would be more beneficial to New Jersey. Like, they don't really have a guy that does what he does. Like, he just stirs the pot, pisses everybody off, you know, fights in the corners constantly all the time. He's he's always keeping the other team on edge and uh, driving people crazy. Um, besides Miles Wood, who kind of does that, I, I don't really see them having a player like that. Who would go back? I imagine the way Detroit Red Wings love their Swedes – Fabian Zitterlin would have to be part of this deal. I really think that that would likely be the case. Um, because they're going to, and they're going to want players back and more players that are like ready right away. They're not going to take Severson or Graves or Graves simply because, actually, you know what? You may be Graves, but you really want him for the playoff run. You can't have. Right, you, you know, you'd have to get another defenseman in return. And you don't want to give too much off the roster because you want to go for a playoff run this year, right? So if you can sign him, there's no need. How much need do you need for Alexander Holtz? Sutherland and Holtz. If you, ask, if you give that, I think that'll do it on his own. If you don't want to give up Holtz, I think they would also be very interested in Makamadoulin. Your big, huge, six foot four, 21 year old right D man that's working out in Russia there. Doesn't have much offensive uh, acumen, but they've got a lot of guys that already have that there, and they love huge defensemen. Either that or one you already have in your lineup in Kevin Ball. Something like that. And they said they want a lot, so it might even be more than that, to tell you the honest truth. But we'll see what other teams are going to be able to offer here. But I think New Jersey could give the best offer out of anybody. They've got so many prospects, so many picks. Maybe Nico Dawes could be part of that deal. You know, um, you have a lot of really good goaltenders coming up there, and uh, they could probably use a little more of a pool of goaltenders, I would think. I know they've got Kosa coming up, and um, Huso doesn't look too bad. Nedeljkovic doesn't seem to have worked out. And I know that Steve Eisenman likes to, to make sure that he's got goaltenders in his system. So, Ohadiak, 
I'm not saying you give up all these guys, but there are so many guys here to choose from. And I think it would take uh, Zetterlin. Look, you're keeping your first in 2023 here. You're not even giving that up. Zetterlin, either Ball or Makamadoulin. I think if it's Ball, maybe that might be enough. Makamadoulin may need another pick or a prospect on top of that. You willing to give up that for him? Tell me what you're thinking, Jersey fans. Comment in the comment section. Let me know. If you're on Facebook, search Perlo NHL and subscribe to the channel. Let me know. Both of you, subscribe. Subscribe. Okay, Detroit Red Wings. Or sorry, Detroit, Dallas Stars. Dallas Stars would be all over this. I don't know if they got the pieces needed to make it happen, but I've heard from so many sources, and they're not my personal sources, by the way. It's just reading all the reading that I do, divorce-worthy amount of hockey that I read and watch. Um, so Tyler Sagan in the middle. They, they really do want to put Tyler Sagan in the middle, but they don't really have anybody to replace him right now. Wyatt Johnson's just a little too green to be playing that role. He's going to be great, but um, just Bertuzzi is everything Dallas loves about life right there. Look, <laughs> Look at that's why they got Mason Mar Marchment, Robertson, these types of guys, Jamie Benn. They love guys like Bertuzzi. Big questions, a couple big questions here. Can they do a cap space at all? 1.9, if uh, Detroit retains, they can do it. Uh, and they want players back. They don't want Dennis Gurian, if I don't think, but you can make him part of the deal. Just throw whatever you can find at it, man. If you really want this guy, can you sign him after that? $8 million next year. That's going to be tough. This, this, That's the tough part here, I think. He's going to want all of that. He's going to want all of that money, but all of the $8 million that they have for next year. That being said, you don't really have anybody to sign. You might be able to do it. You don't need – you could put Corey Gurian up in the deal, but it's not really adding too much. And then you just give all the prospects you've got in the land, just like throw them whatever you can find. <laughs> just throw them whatever you can find. In the drawer, just open up the drawers. Med Blue Mel is probably ready to play, and they might be happy with a guy like that. Maverick Bork, you know, the only one maybe I would not touch is Stankoven, and that's probably the guy they're going to want. Is Stankoven? But Blue Mel, you you are, do they? Uh, you don't even have a first in two thousand twenty three, do you now? Yeah, I think you got to give Stankoven in the deal. I think you do. But Bertuzzi right now, Stankoven's just a, you know is a little bit of a light light guy. Do you know what Bertuzzi is all about, man? You don't you look at that lineup with Bertuzzi in it. They give Stankoven in the deal. I think he gets it done. And you've got Robertson, Hintz, Pavelski, Marchment, Sagan. Bertuzzi, he can play right side. Ben Wyatt Delandria, that top nine is woo, amazing, amazing. You know, Kivaranta comes back, fills out your bottom four. You know, bring up Riley, Riley Tufty or whatever you got to do to fill in that top four. But your top nine is off the charts, and you got a guy who plays. What everybody wants in the playoffs. Tell me what you think, Dallas fans. Subscribe to my channel and let me know. If you're on Facebook, search Perlo's NHL. Next, the New York Rangers. And I don't I put it the New York Rangers here again because everybody's gonna scream that they want him. They need a right winger still. Even with Tarasenko there, they could use a right winger. Um but a player would have to go back in a significant one because I am sure that they don't have a cap space to do this deal. 1.1 million if they retain. You got to find a way to get up and give up a million dollars. And next year, you're not going to be able to sign him, right? Because unless you don't take Tarasenko, 
unless you don't sign Tarasenko past that. He's going to take up all the money, plus you got Filipino. Just going to rental the shit out of everything here. But for this, for shits and giggles, I put him in there because I know everybody in New York was going to want a guy like that. They're going to want a Bertuzzi. And if they really want to go for it this year, they may just take two rentals and go for it. But um, I think it's going to, I think it's going to cost Chicago. I really do. I think it's going to cost you Chicago, which you're going to have to sign in 2024 anyways. I don't know if Detroit's going to be interested in a guy like Chicago. I think so. It's that type of player for them. But I think that's what it's going to cost. Would you do it? Chicago for Bertuzzi. Man, Bertuzzi, Trocek, and Panarin. Kreders, Bonajad, and Tarasenko. You can find a way to sign one of those guys. I don't know, but New York Rangers fans, you message me, you talk to me, so I put you in there for the Bertuzzi deal because I know everybody loves a guy like Bertuzzi in New York. I just don't see how it could happen. Short of, like, I just, I don't see how it can happen financially. And, I mean, it's a rental and you're losing Kako. I, I don't do it. And I love Bertuzzi, but I, I probably don't do that deal. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know, New York Rangers fans. Next, Calgary Flames. And the Calgary Flames would be like scrambling all over their desks. They would be losing their shit to get Bertuzzi. I'm telling you that right now. He's Canadian. He is everything that Calgary wants every player they have to be. Sutter would absolutely... Things would get sticky all around the arena, let's put it that way. <laughs> if Sutter found out that they could get Tyler Bertuzzi. But I'll tell you this right now. It's going to cost you Jacob Pelche right off the get-go. No doubt about it. It's costing you Jacob Pelche. And what do you need him for if you do get Bertuzzi? you re you got to re-sign him. Do you have any – do they even have any cap space? I should just see if they have cap space at all. Cap space, I'm holding my breath here as I look at the cap space. Oh my god, do you certainly not have cap space? <laughs> uh three million now, you could do it now. You could do it for this year. But Milan Lucic is coming off the books next year, and you still don't have cap space after signing Huberto. Man, oh man, are you gonna regret that Huberto contract? I said it from the beginning, and uh, I'm not changing my mind on that. You could, is there a defenseman you could give up or something? Uh, yeah, Zadaroff. Gilbert could replace Zadaroff. You do Zadaroff to give you another $3 million for next year. Pelche. And a first round pick. Uh, yeah, you do. They do have their first round pick in 2023. Zadaroff, Pelche, and a 2023 first round pick. And then I don't know what you're going to do next year to keep them. I can't believe that cap space. Oh my God, that's brutal. Nothing for cap space next year. One million. They can't do anything to improve their team next year unless they ship contracts out. Maybe you got to go Mangiopani. Mangiopani's had a bad year. Would you rather have Bertuzzi than Mangiopani? He has no no trade clause. That could do it. Mangiopani, then you wouldn't trade Pelche. He can take Pelche's place. Zadaroff and a first-round pick. Mangiopani, Zadaroff, and a first-round pick. Detroit might do that. And that might give you enough cap space, maybe, to sign Bertuzzi long-term. And then I don't know how you're going to fill out the roster. But I know Calgary fans would be all over that. For sure. I know Calgary fans, and they are out. They would be climbing the ceiling to get a guy like that. Finally. 
And I got to get it up here because I was looking at speed loss. The number one place I think you would go, and I know they have no cap space at all, but it never matters to them. I think they do this deal all day long. They'll scramble all over the place like the Calgary Flames to get Bertuzzi and somehow sign him. The Vegas Golden Knights. The Vegas Golden Knights, I'm positive, would be all over this. You get Bertuzzi, Jack Eichel, Marcia Show, Smith, Carlson, um, Amadio, who do they have injured right now? And bring, get Stone back. If you could get Stone back, but because they don't get have Stone, I think it's possible they can work this. That's going to give them the cap space they need. No, nothing. They still don't have cap space. No dead cap, no nothing. So it would have to be player for player. First round picks in 2023 gone. Does Vegas care about 2000? No, they don't care about first round picks. Uh, Riley Smith, put him in the deal. $5 million for the next three years. It's for Tuesday, man. That would shave off some. See if they'll take Brad Howden and like Dan Miramanoff. Something like that. I don't understand why the IR money here, salary, oh, the IR money here should give them the cap space to be able to do that, but it doesn't show it here. Somebody comment in the comment section and tell me why that doesn't show. Stone's money should be off of there. You should be able to fit this in because of, uh, oh, because they, they haven't put him on long-term IR. That's why. Yeah, injured reserve. They did put him on long-term. Oh, no, they haven't put him on long-term IR. You put Stone on long-term IR, and you can fit it in. That's why. For now, you have to figure out if Stone ever gets healthy again, you got to figure something out. Vegas does this all the time. So... You could bring him right now. You wouldn't even have to lose Smith. You got you put him on IR. You got the space right now. We'll worry about tomorrow another day. <laughs> Just like Vegas always does. 2023 first. They want players. I don't you don't want Riley to, to lose Riley Smith. Maybe a Brett Howden. Oh, Paul Cotter. We'll give him Paul Cotter. Uh he he looks really good, Paul Cotter. And uh, Daniel Miramanoff is probably ready to play right away. First round draft pick in 2023. Go into our prospect pool, pick some players. I don't care. If I'm this is Vegas, right? We don't care about tomorrow at all. Just give us Bertuzzi. Tell me what you think, Vegas fan. I get Vegas fans get mad at me all the time. What about we gotta we can't just suck later? Well, you talk to your organization, call them, I guess, email them, ask them what they're doing. Because that's what they're doing. <laughs> that's what they're doing. And I imagine they would do this again. Subscribe to my channel, Vegas fans. You can tell me all your discontent. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.